Hey everybody, we've, we're going to talk about international studio design. We have a great perspective on that. We have a brand new ITL. We got some big announcements. We've got a lot going on. You're at the place, Pensado's place. Yay. What's up guys? Glad to have you back. Great week, a lot of fun. Great week for me, not a great week for you. And, and <laughs> we've, <good> week. <laughs> we've been uh, so busy, but uh, man, um, we'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, uh, Will can back me up on this, sir. But I really liked the ITL we did this week. Cool. I thought it was pretty. You liked it too, didn't you, Will? Yes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we covered yeah, for each other. Yeah, I liked it too. <laughs> But uh, we're going to jump right into ITL because we've got such a big show for you today. Let me do a little bit of homework first. Is that my phone yours? Um, we've got, uh, you know where to reach us, guys. There's the page. They'll throw it up. Make sure that you do your homework. Reach us on Facebook and Twitter and all the various places. Um, our partners, Vintage King, are in the house. There's our information about where to reach us. You already know that, so I don't need to be redundant, although I'm being redundant. Um, our partners, Vintage King, always in the house. Chevy and our gang and our family. Uh, who, we ha who do we have? We have Drew Townsend in there. You guys like Drew, so Drew, there's Drew's page. He's in the, in the chat room, our corner office. Um, obviously, our DJ, uh, he's, not the, he's not the DJ. He's actually officially become the CJ. Like Ron Artest, he's officially changed his name. He's no longer known as Drew Adams. He's known as Chat Jockey. Drew, what's up, Drew? There he is. Uh, we're loaded with stuff. We're going to announce something pretty special. We'll talk about that right after the ITL. Dave, why don't we get to the ITL? Cool. Uh, guys, um, I'm working with, with some drum loops, but I want you to listen to this and watch this ITL because all these things are, are applicable to vocals, applicable to instruments, but, but I, I just, for the sake of time, I just wanted you to, you to see it with, with some loops. They can be done with dry, live drums, like if you've got a live drum kit, you just record it, do some of these little techniques, maybe throw it in for a bridge. So uh, I, I, I can't wait for you to see this one. I think it's a good one. It starts off a little silly, Herb, so I hope people what don't else, <laughs> get ready to get flamed. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> but but, but Ryan, and, Ryan and Mo said they liked it. So. Cool. Uh, Drew, let's, I mean, uh, Will, let's run it. Oh, hi. Caught me. How you doing, guys? Man, glad to have you. I'm doing a, a show today about um, loops. Now, before, before all you rockers and uh, heavy metal guys change the channel and start watching Jersey Shore, um, this is applicable to everything because you can, take your, you can take live drums, print them to a stereo track and do these techniques and, and then add that back into your original sound and get some really cool stuff. It's, it's, and, it's, and a lot of these techniques are applicable to uh, uh, auxes where you're doing aux on all the tracks or whatever, whatever. But I'm using loops to kind of demonstrate it because that's kind of how I came up with a lot of this stuff. Well, I'm just going to jump right in because I think it's self-explanatory. So I've got this loop here. I've made uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've made six copies of it, and so all of these are the same loop. They're identical, but we're gonna we're gonna apply different techniques. I've got all these muted except for one. So guys, this is this is the loop. Let's get a little color by using the, the, the Waves Kramer MPX. With it. That's, that's pretty cool. Now another one I like, they're different. They're both incredibly good, but they're just different. Uh, this is the um, UAD ATR 102. With it. One of the things I like to do with the um, tape emulators is I like to add a little bit of um, a little bit of this, a little bit of color and a little bit of high end. So this is the new waves HEQ. I'm adding, if you notice right here, I'm adding 370% of tonal harmonic distortion, and looks like I'm shelving at 10k 
about 2.75, okay? This is without it. With it. Without. With. Okay, so let's start there. Now, um, we've made a copy right here, this, this, this guy here. And, and on this track, if you notice, the high end wasn't quite right. So what I've done, I made a copy of the track. And then uh, I'm rolling off everything below 6K. So now we've got this. Okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enhance that top end just a little bit. This is a, another Kramer HLS. It's, it's got a color to it I like for this. So this is, um, this is with it. But you could use anything. You could use E6. You could use um, just any, any nice, sweet top end EQ. And then... Um, and then I want to um, I want to widen it a little bit, so um, I'm going to add this chorus. Okay, why are we doing that, Dave? Well, here's our original. Now watch watch the little cursor. I'm going to add this in after one time three. Without it. With it. And this is what the chorus is doing. This is without the chorus. With it. Okay. Now, I want to get a little bit of mid range in there. So uh, it's not pumping like I'd like. So I'm here again. I'm putting the, I'm putting the F2, uh, rolling off a little sub, rolling off a little top. And then I'm adding the SPL. And so now this is what I've got. Just this track. Now let's add that to our original. With it. Without it. Now, uh, I'm going to save this one. This one, I'll, uh, I'm going to go to this one. Now, now I'm going to add a little bit of low end. We're going to roll off everything above 210 cycles. So let me make sure we're only monitoring the one track. Oh, that's my low end. Don't laugh, but this little EQ. I'm not even sure they make it anymore. I, I, I saved it because it, it's just, it just, anything from about 100 cycles down, anything about 80 cycles down, I love this old, old, old Digi EQ. So I've got it set on 70. Let me exaggerate it for you. We can we can try a little R base if we want. Okay, now when I add that back in to the original, without it, Woo. nice. Okay, now what I've done here is I've set up trigger. I'm gonna add some snaps. Now, how can you do that? Uh, let's let, let's see what Trigger's doing. Okay, that's horrible. Okay, but but check this. Let's take the high pass filter. You can do this before it gets to the to the trigger. So let's put a high pass filter. Now, 
I'm going to raise my input because because I lowered I lowered the volume. Now, what I can do is I can emphasize um, the frequencies for the snare. Okay, so now we got we've extracted just the snare out of the loop to trigger with. Sometimes you want a little more stereoness out of the loop, like maybe, uh, and, and, and different things are going to be affected by the stereo wideners. I like the loops. I like this one. It's um, it's by uh, Digi. It's, it's uh, one of their uh, Air series, and uh, this is a preset. Uh, I could have modified a preset, but I named it. I named it me, but I'll let you look at it real quick, so you can copy it. Uh, I panned it a little bit because I liked it better that way. Okay, so here's here's the loop without it. With it. Okay. So now let's add that back into the original. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to add these back in one at a time so you can kind of get a vibe for what they're doing. Okay. Here we go. Here's, here's our original loop. the high end. I'm going to add the smack. Add the widener. Sub. And then the snaps. Okay, round of applause for me. Um, but what I'm telling you guys is, is these are techniques that can be applicable to a lot of different situations. It's a, it's a modified form of, of paralleling. You've heard parallel compression. Well, this is kind of like parallel everything. And then, and then once you've got the high end isolated, you can do unique things to just that. You can chorus it. You can put just reverb on it. Uh, if you wanted a little bit of reverb on the loop for the snare, you could you could uh, use another snare sample instead of the snaps. Do what we did to isolate it, and then send that to a reverb, and only have the reverb play, not the original sound. So that would add reverb to your snare. If you wanted it to be generated by your snare, you could sample just the snare, but not play it, not not add it back in. Just add the reverb that it generates back in. So there's a lot of different things you can do with this technique and it's applicable to every, um, I don't know why I can't say this word, Herb always makes fun of me, genre, is that right Will? Genre. Oh, genre, sorry. <laughs> um, man, we got a French guy on the show today and I can't even pronounce that. But anyway, you know, as always, uh, I'm, I'm always inter interested to see how you guys adapt and use some of these things. And, and it helps me learn too. So if you think of something, a unique way to use this, let me know. But you can use it with vocals. You can separate the high end off of the vocal and add that back in with chorus to the lead vocal on Touch My Body. I have to ask Jason, because we did that together, Mariah Carey. I think, I think we did that. I think I did that on, on that song. I can't remember. But, but I'm, I'm telling you, you can, you, can, you can use these techniques for a lot of different things. All right, back to you, Dave. Man, I hope you enjoyed that. I kind of had fun doing it. Um, uh, there was a comment on the chat room about the overall gain coming up a little bit. That's, that's true. But uh, you can take all those, run them to an aux, and bring the gain back down that way real simply, and then uh, A-B it. But uh, it, it, 
I can't emphasize enough. There's so much there to, to kind of sift through and learn and play with and then use your imagination. There, it's not limited to, to drums. It's, it's, you can use those techniques for anything. Man, uh, Herbert. Yes. <laughs> what would you like? Man, I don't know. It's like there's so, I don't know where to start. There's so many cool things happening. There's so many things I've been waiting. Uh, we've done about, what, 4,000 episodes now? 4,000, waiting. We've been waiting so long for, for some things that we're about to tell them about. I'm really excited about it. There's something as simple as, guys, I, every, every, every episode there's things I want to share with you and I don't have a place to put them or it's so hard to put it up on Facebook. We've got a place now where I can start posting things, little extra things for you. And then um, so let's tell something on a bigger nature. Let's tell them about it. Um, we are excited, really excited. We're going to start our first in a live series of initiatives. Um, this one's going to be LA-based. It's Dave Pensado Live, for all intents and purposes, called Pensado Live The Mix Fest. And we're going to combine education and learning and a bunch of fun and stuff and have this live event. Um, and it's kind of like EDC. It's like the Engineer Dave Carnival or Dave Palooza. It's just going to be, <laughs> you can see it up on the screen. It's going to be November 12th. It's LA based for all those folks who are around the su surrounding communities. Um, we're going to do a lot of things. And, and let me just say this to the online community, we're also going, or who can't come to this, we're, gonna, we're preparing something for you as well, too. Uh, but we have to make sure the capabilities are there to do it. This is going to be a lot of fun with a lot of features. One of the coolest features is you're going to get USB keys that allow you to bring your laptop and actually mix along with Dave and utilize the principles that he's teaching about. You'll be able to take that lesson home. You'll be able to submit that later for a national mix contest. We're about a million some odd people will have a chance to evaluate. Dave will then pick the winner of that mix, and that person will sit right to our left and be a special guest on Pensado's Place. That's one thing. We're going to give you gift bags. They're going to be full of stuff. And so for the value of what you get, you're going to get more than that back in our gift bags. We're going to have a Q&A with Dave and I and another special guest, rock star, superstar. We're making that decision soon. We're going to do a process in logic so that you know how to make beats and do things like that. And our incredible, incredible sponsors, incredible sponsors, and our strategic partners like Vintage King, like Avid, like McDSP, like Naris, they are going to give away tons of things during this event. We're going to give away big ticket items. You're going to be available to win stuff. Everybody's leaving MixFest a winner. You can see it at our, also at our new website. So you want to go to our new website, which is pensadosplace.tv. There it is up on the screen. You can go get all the information. There's a button sitting there. Um, Dave is going to do fire breathing. <coughs> he's, that he's coughing now because he's been practicing. Um, <laughs> we, we're, we're just going to have fun. So in, in sort of classic Pensado fashion, what we want to do is educate, have a ball. We're going to spend three hours getting a lot of information. You're going to walk away with lots of stuff beyond just learning. You're going to meet some of your heroes. Um, we're going to have a good time. Um, I'm excited about this. What do you think? Well, you know, Herb, like a lot of you guys have seen me speak at AES or NAM or uh, RSPE, various places, and, and, and I always, after we do, after I do a live thing, speaking engagement as opposed to a dead thing like we do here, um, <laughs> I, I'm always energized for about a week. Just the questions, the the interaction is instantaneous. Like. Like, you guys can't tell, but right now, Herb and I, we can look at the chat room, and we, we follow the chat room live while we're, while we're talking to you, and that, that helps us get a sense of, of what you feel like. But this live event allows us to do so many things that we can't do that, that, that I still want to, to do for you guys. And um, there's, there's several components about this I want to I wanna talk to you about. One is, um, when we were putting this together, Herb and I felt like it was imperative that the, the money you pay to get into this event, that, that you would leave with more money in your pocket in a sense. So, so we've talked to some, uh, some great sponsors, um, McDSP, Naris, Vintage King, and Avid. Um, and, and they're going to provide you with, with not junk, but usable, usable things that you'll receive in a bag when you get there. And uh, the value of that will be easily twice the value of the ticket. 
and then and then the USB thing. This is something new that that we came up with that I think is going to be neat. Uh, there's some things I can't do in the confines of of the show. Uh, as you guys know, the FCC won't let us go past an hour because it's, the show is just too explosive and it misses with things on the internet. I can't explain it, but but this live event will allow us to take as much time as we need and can to to, to delve into some things. Something as simple as like what we were talking about the loop thing. Well, what 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 you're gonna I'm a, you'll you'll see me on a big screen uh, behind me and, and and you'll be mixing along so so your questions can be instantaneously answered. Uh, it's just going to be a, a, a really cool thing. And then the website, I'm equally, uh, equally excited about that. Be kind with us on the website. We're, 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 it's going to grow. It's going to be a lot more than what you see. There it is. But, but we, screen, some, yeah. you got to start somewhere. And so um, uh, I, I think it looks really cool. So um, make sure you get to the website. You check in. Um, we're looking to see you there. We're doing this in a beautiful movie theater. We're going to shoot it inside so every seat is good. It'll be up on the widescreen. Um, it's going to be a ball. Um, we, we expect that uh, to see a lot of our friends there. And again, online audience, we are not forgetting about you. We're just preparing to make sure that when we come to you, we can facilitate it and so on and so forth. So, so stay tuned. We, we haven't forgotten. Um, we're pumped up. It's called Pensado Live, the Mix Fest, and uh, at the beautiful Ibar Theater in Hollywood. Let's get to, we have got a guest from Paris. I, I'm just tickled at that. We have a, this is, but beyond the fact that this is a craftsman at, at the highest level and a good friend of Dave's, why don't we introduce yeah, him? Yeah, man, you guys, uh, Thomas, uh, Joan Jean, Joan Jean, yeah. uh, uh, is our guest today. We just call him Thomas. I was exposed to him through some through Dylan, a friend of mine, and um, Brad Blackwood. So one of the reasons I wanted Thomas on the show was uh, I want you to, after you watch this show, go back and watch the Bob Hoda show because these are going to kind of dovetail and work work together. Uh, Thomas and and and, and Bob are, are the top two guys at what they do, and so we're going to expand a little bit, fill in some of the holes from that other show, and then take you into some new areas. Thomas is. Uh, a degree he has a degree in engineering. He he can he approaches this from a, a really esoteric level, but at the same time his motto is accurate yet natural. He he comes up with a he came up with a system that he calls FTB, and go to his website and, and look at some of this stuff. Particularly if you if you've got a few million lying around and you need a, a studio design, that go to go to Northward Northward W A R D Acoustics dot com and look at some of the stuff he's done and and. Um, uh, although Thomas has an international reputation for doing some of the top r rooms in the world, I'm going to get to him in a minute. <laughs> I'm just proud of him, man. This cat is so cool. Um, he, he's also he's also taking the time to impart some information to you guys with uh, seven foot ceilings and small rooms. A seven foot ceiling, you know who you are. And um, uh, Check out uh, a, a thing on Gear Sluts that Thomas did. There's a, a um, I think it's Gear Sluts. Uh, you can see the construction of a studio from start to finish. It's, I thought that was pretty fascinating. He's done a test room for Philips. So in other words, Philips is one of the largest electronics manufacturers in the world. They came to him to design a room to, 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 to test their speakers and stuff. Uh, he did a jazz club in Brussels. Noisia, you, you hear me talk about Noisia and Skrillex and some of these guys. He just finished a, a new room for Noisia in Holland. Uh, I want to meet him. In Holland. <laughs> Can we meet him? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. No, I still got another card left. Um, and then he moderates a forum Thomas on Pro you Sound Web Good to see you. <laughs> um, that you might want to check out. So, anyway, Thomas, man, thank you so much for coming in. He flew in for us, me. guys. And um, um, I, I want to give a shout out to uh, Sylvia Santa Fe, his uh, his cohort and another engineer. And Air France. Yeah, she, she couldn't be uh, here today. <laughs> yeah, but she's looking. Uh, Air France. Well, how the way he got here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you fly Air France? Yeah. Sweet. That's yeah. French, folks. We stay, we stay together, yeah. man. Are you and him going to talk in French before the show's over? Yeah. yeah, we've been talking about you. So. Yeah. But anyways, they want to hear about us. They don't want to hear about us. Um, so, Thomas, what's, what's, let's just jump right in, because um, you and I have, have been talking a lot and, um, recently, and, and, and you've, you've educated me so much about, about some of the just common problems we all tend to have. 
like let's 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 focus for a minute on 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 just a typical home type studio situation yeah. or, or a guy that's just renting a little small place or whatever hmm. um, what's the best way like like What's the best, is there a logic behind where you set your subs and how you set your subs? Do you set them on the ground? Do you put them a foot off the ground? Do you face the back wall? Do you, should you be at least five feet from the back wall? Or do you put the subs out in the parking lot? And does Herb even know what a sub is? <laughs> well, uh, something that goes underwater. <laughs> uh, <laughs> subs are difficult uh, because there's different uh, types of qualities in subs. Um, normally, you should not be able to hear where low frequencies come from, so you should not be able to locate where your subwoofer is. Yeah. Um, so the first thing to do is choose wisely when you choose a subwoofer. So make sure there's no uh, venting noise, air noise, or that there's not so much um, harmonic distortion so that it will emit uh, frequencies that you can locate. And so that's um, often low-end subwoofers are. But should they be on the ground? or should Yeah, you? they can be on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so when they couple with the floor, and with the, that's okay? Yeah. That's okay. D don't put them, um, well, actually, you can put them anywhere they work, basically. But w what we do is that we have the equilateral triangle where the speaker should be, and we trace a circle on the floor, and the subwoofer should be somewhere on that circle. That's triangle with the speaker. So, like, like you're saying, like, 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 if this is my head, yeah. and here's a speaker, and here's a speaker, yeah. uh, you draw a circle like this, yeah. And, and, and how no, does circle, that relate you're, to you're the, the you're, the, you're the center of the circle. Oh, okay. And so it's equidistant. Okay, uh, okay I don't know if you guys can see the table, but... They can. Huh? They, they can. can. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And... and, but and oh, go ahead. In practice, we usually uh, always tell the clients to leave their speakers full range and just add a little bit of bottom with the subwoofer, but don't uh, filter your speakers. Leave them full range. Oh, wow. And uh, most... Did you hear that, Drew? Yeah. And most mastering studios... I, 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 I filter off, but yeah. you, you're saying that... No, no, use in full range. Yeah, okay. yeah. Just use a sub just to put some uh, you know, low frequencies in your ear, like okay. 20, 40, and that's it. Okay. And then let your speakers do the rest of the job. Okay. Um, when, 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 like, when an average guy like me listens to a set of speakers, and, and I'm trying to decide which speakers I should buy for my studio, and I go mm -hmm. to... Uh, Vintage King, and I listen to all these different speakers, or go to another store. Um, what should I listen for? What, 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 what? Uh, I, should, I mean, I, I play my, I play songs I know, and hmm. I hear the sound come out of the speakers. If I like it, I buy them. If I don't hmm. like it, I don't. But should I be listening to, uh, for other things in terms of my engineering? Well, there's always the problem of the room. But if you consider that you work in a good room, you should uh, look for things like depth, perception of depth. And that's very important because that will tell you how you compress as well in your mix. So how your compressor will affect uh, the, uh, uh, how the vocal stick out Describe of the mix. Describe what you mean by depth a little more. Um, it's the, like that clarity? Um, no, it's how you, you have instruments that are closer to you and some uh, that are further away. And some speakers do that better yeah, than others? Yeah, yeah, especially those that have a good uh, mid-range definition. Mm -hmm. And that really helps you um, see what compressor do to your sound in terms of the presentation. Wow. Uh, and so I didn't know that. Uh, good mixes are very 3D like. Yeah. Um, if your mix becomes flat in 2D, it's, it's kind of boring, and uh -huh. a good speaker will tell you that. Is that a function like, like if, if this is a speaker and this speaker is trying to amplify a, a sine wave, mm. it first goes out and then, and then the negative part of sine wave, it moves back from center. The mm. speed with which it moves out and rebounds. Mm. It, does that affect the sound too? Yeah, that does, but also the, the distortion of the membrane itself is important. So oh, That's why they stiffen them sometimes? Uh, either they stiffen them really hard, like uh, Focal does, for example, mm -hmm. with the beryllium tweeter, or other brands will just have the, them quite limp, uh, for lack of a better word. So they, they all manage that. Uh, oh, yeah. Just he, uh, Thomas mentioned Focal, which is one of the premier speaker designers in the world. He, he actually designed their their facility their test facility and then contributes ideas to ATC which he, he works very closely with so so when we're getting this information we're getting this information about speakers and design from somebody I'm telling you guys he's he's deep um, do let, let's go back to this how to choose monitors so 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 we want something that gives us depth um, 
I, I always hear people talk about um, what's the word they use? Not width, but but a clarity so they can know where to pan things and stuff mm -hmm. like that. How do you listen for that? Is that just? Uh, but that's very dependent on the room, actually. It is. Uh, so that's yeah, more. Yeah. yeah. Dampening uh, early reflections and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you have a bad room, there's. Uh, okay. not well, we'll much get into that in a minute. Yeah. Now, um, there seems to be a current trend to take really expensive, really high quality home mm -hmm. speakers, hi fi speakers, and turn those into studio monitors. I tend to not like that. Am I am I missing out on something? Uh, well, First actually, of all, they cost eight trillion dollars, so that yes. doesn't help my taste. <laughs> um, but these speakers are not necessarily um, designed to be neutral. So sometimes there's a, they voluntarily uh, color them so that they will sit a little more or be a bit brighter or uh, so they're not. Um, so they don't you don't work as hard because that you're you're hearing yeah. something that yeah. already sounds better come out of the yeah. speaker. So. So would you say that's the main flaw yeah, with them? The second flaw is sometimes they're made to look good but not necessarily sound good. So uh, that's another thing to be careful with. That's a problem I had with Drew. Yeah. Look good, <laughs> not necessarily sound good. <coughs> when you're, uh, I'm in the process of treating, uh, I just recently moved and I'm treating my new room. Mm -hmm. Should I pay more attention to what I do on the walls as opposed to what I do in the corners? Like the corners tend to build up base and require, yeah. they can mess with the base. The walls tend to give reflections. Mm. From your opinion and experience, what, what should I work on first, the, the walls or the corners? Well, the, the thing is that the, these rooms function like a system. So you can't really do one thing and not do the rest. Uh, Funks like system. I mean, everything everything affects everything yes, else. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you really need to get um, to, to plan what you're going to do and make sure that you attend every uh, problem that can happen in a room. Uh, the first thing I would do is treat early reflections, and when mm -hmm. you do so, don't treat just high and mid frequencies. Use systems that will also take care of the base. Um, okay. And you you can treat corners, but usually I recommend that you. Uh, trap all the back of all your back wall. Okay. Um, now when you say trap, I know this, we, we might not be able to get into this fully, but um, when you say trap, you're talking about it takes, it takes mass to trap low frequencies, um, right? So, 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 so no, you, you would need a membrane or something that when those low frequencies hit it, well, it absorbs it? You have two systems. You have one system that uh, is based on uh, resistance to flow. So basically, the, the, let's say the, the particles slow down in it. It's all what's rock wool or um, any sort of... Uh, oh, it's going to yeah, through like this. Rock and, or something. And basically, the energy there is uh, transformed into heat. Uh, you should try not to uh, put these treatments against the wall, but space them away, because they need velocity in the particles to work. And near a wall, there is no velocity. There's pressure. Uh, that's um, oh, because the sound waves go through. They go, go, they through, go the, through the the the, 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 the rock, wall. rock wall, and then the they slow down. So so so, without any energy left, they can't be absorbed. Right? Um, Is that kind of what you're saying? No. Um, the, the physics are such that you know, when you're near a boundary, mm -hmm. there is no more velocity, there's no more movement in the particles. So if you have rock wool there, the friction will be very limited Okay. Uh, because of this lack of movement. So you want to space it away from the wall so that you still catch uh, A lot velocity. of designs I see, like, like say this is a, a one inch sheet of, of Owens Corning mm -hmm. 703, one inch thick. They, they tend to take that and this is a piece of like eighth inch plywood, mm -hmm. they would put it in front of the plywood and then put a frame around it and then they would mount it, like let's say my, this is my wall, they would mount that miss mm. four inches from the wall. Is that a, an effective way to base trap? Uh, that's a membrane. Uh, that's, that's what you call a membrane. Yeah, and these, they actually work best against the walls or really close to boundaries because there's a lot of pressure there. And these system uh, manage the When you say close, pressure. you're talking about an inch, two inches? No, uh, membranes can be really close. Basically, the system is against the wall. So oh. we'll just have, for example, you have a lot of, uh, in the uh, industry, they use a lot of um, steel plates uh, glued to a special form that's called Bazotech. And that uh, But like a guy building well. something at home, I don't, I don't want to give yeah. away your secrets or anything, but a guy <laughs> building something at home, <clears throat> is there some place where you can, where you can see, like if you use quarter, if you use eighth inch plywood, you would be, you would be trapping 
30, 40 cycles. If you use quarter inch, you, you move up to 80, 90, half inch. Is, is there, is there yeah. formulas for that? Because yeah, there are, but the problem is that the, with acoustics, you're always in the gray area. So you have theory and practice, so and the way you mount the panel, the, where you put it, will influence uh, its efficiency. Mm -hmm. And um, so the best is to try things. Uh, what I would Experiment. do is, yeah, first is try with resistance to flow. So rock wool, space it away from the wall, uh, build a frame, and for example, yeah, I, I would really recommend trap all your back wall. Uh, that would be efficient, and um, maybe try to different spacing, um, try different depth. But I would. Say it never worked with less than four to six inches of rock wool. Thinner than that, you're go only going to work in high and mid frequencies, and you need to never go closer than four to six inches. Uh, <laughs> never less than that. I would say four is the minimum. But, but I'm confused. A minute ago, you said I should be I, I should be closer. What's the difference? Uh, with the membrane, you should be closer. Now we're talking rock wool, and that's different types of treatment. Okay. Membranes need to be closed, and rock wool needs to be away. Okay. Because they use different, uh, they work in a different way. Okay. I think I understand. Let me go over it one more time. So, so I've got my 703, one inch thick. Yeah. So. Actually, you want that four inch thick. Oh, I want this four inches thick. Yeah, yeah. And it's cool to, if I can't get four inches, it's cool to, to Yeah, you can stack glue. one inch together, yeah. And so, so I, don't, I don't need anything behind it. I just build a frame, something to hold it, put some cloth. Yeah, yeah. I make sure I find cloth that I can see through or blow yeah, through. exactly. That way, it doesn't reflect the sound. And then now I take that that mess of stuff and I mount it four inches from the wall, or four to um, six. Yeah, four to six. And what? How low? How low of frequencies does that absorb? Uh, it's the quarter wavelength. So in theory, um, will it go down to fifty? No, no. For that, you need to use membrane. These systems, based on Rockwell and Owens Corning, they don't work so much under hundred hertz. Uh, under okay. that, you need to use other techniques, and they're they're quite heavy, to be honest. And that's what's so expensive in professional studios. The the the, uh, the space you need to treat uh, 30 hertz is huge. Uh, so oh, that's. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Uh, yeah. I, I've heard just sort of in my travels this axiom that square rooms are bad. Is, is that true? Is yeah, because you add uh, you add problems at the same frequency because of the modal response of the room. So the room is a bit like an organ pipe, has resonances. Mm -hmm. And when the you have similar uh, sizes in the room, mm -hmm. if that's the right wording, mm -hmm. then you add um, cancellations and peaks at the same frequencies. Uh, oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. So if I've, got, if, I've got, yeah. if I've got, if I've got a square language. room, gotcha. if I've got a square room, and then, and then, and my sound source is here. It's going to come here, and let's say I'm standing here. The sound is here, mm. and it comes here, and it could be 180 degrees out of phase, so it'll cancel out where my head is. Yeah, a lot easier than if than if my room was like that. Yeah. So basically, you can go on the internet, and you will find a lot of websites. It's like it's like pool. It's like it's like a yeah, pool yeah, table. Like is, if yeah. you're going to bank a, yeah. a pool ball, you, you, the exactly. angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, yeah. right? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. 60,000 bucks for that education at Clemson, and that's all I got out of it. <laughs> By the way, go Tigers. We're, we're undefeated, Herb. Cool. How's your team doing? Huh? How's your team doing? They're locked out. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the banners at hand. Go Tigers. D d d d d did he answer your question? Absolutely. Absolutely. Makes perfect sense. And, and, and also, too, uh, Thomas told me uh, a long time ago, Think of the, the the ceiling and the floor is just another wall. Surfaces are surfaces yeah. to sound. They don't make a distinction between no. mm, no. walls, ceilings. So a cube is actually the worst thing oh, you could possibly you can have do. on yeah. earth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I, Thomas told me he charges an extra twenty thousand dollars to work on cubes. So, <laughs> um, Thomas, um, I'm confused about clouds or above the engineers' heads. You always see. A lot yeah. of smaller studios have something hanging above yeah. the engineer. Well, in earthquake country, like we are out here, that's yeah. not my first choice. Is that necessary? Uh, yeah, there's early... I mean, I know you can answer that question without being in the room, but from your experience, um, do you tend to find those useful? Yeah, they are. Okay. Um, there's early reflections also with the ceiling. Mm -hmm. now, the only surface that is hard to treat is the floor. Uh, okay. And so that's called the floor effect, and there's very little you can do for that. Is, is carpet better than... 
carpet won't do anything for you. In the Is case. it better than a, than a, than a, um, than a wood floor? I, I prefer wood floors because carpet will absorb really high frequencies and might make this room feel a bit unbalanced or a bit dead when it's actually not dead. Um, okay. So, but a, a, ceiling, a cloud over your head is a good thing because there's also already reflections there. So, now, now if a, if a guy is sitting at home and, and he, he, he ha, like with, without spending a lot of money, mm. does a does a does a guy a guy sitting at home does he have to use his ears? Is uh, is there an inexpensive way that you know of to? Um, to, to measure all of these things, or, or like you're so experienced, you, you do both. You use your ears, then you yeah, use a lot of very expensive and, yeah. test equipment. Is there something like a like like, like well, one of the guys watching the show can do? How the mix translates is a good indication of how good the room oh, is. Oh, great idea! Um, but basically, you can buy a cheap measurement microphone, and there's a lot of software around that's very good, and uh, we actually use them ourselves. Um, M-A-R-C-E-L-S? There's, um, there's uh, Ruby Q Wizard, which is really good. The fuzz measure on Mac uh, works fine. I think it's on Mac. And so uh, for a little bit of money, you get uh, uh, measurement equipment and you, you can, um, that will help you uh, understand what works best or not in your room. And if you move that panel a little bit, you can measure the difference and you can listen and you can try to mm -hmm. correlate what you see on the graph and what you hear. Um, when you're measuring, if you like, I, like I actually have a, a measuring system. Uh, should I put my microphone where my at head head level, and should I should I move it around a little bit to, to like because uh, if I, if I try just one listening area, I mm -hmm. can be getting all sorts of anomalies right there. Should I try? A couple yeah, of usually things? we grid the room, so we get a, a mapping of the room, and we know exactly what uh, is going on. Okay. But you can start by measuring at your. Sweet spot. And yes. one last question. Um, this is from my buddy Phil Grice up in uh, mm. Montreal. Phil's got a, a, a three and a half foot ceiling in, in his studio. No, wait a minute. It wasn't three and a half, was it, Drew? I think it's seven. Um, <laughs> it's a low ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Phil's really mixing <laughs> His assistants are gerbils. Uh -huh. But, but, but I, I, I got to take advantage of your, of your expertise because Phil is like, he's like, he's, 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 he's just so worried about his ceiling. Mm. That's not a. That's not necessarily a negative thing. A, a lower ceiling can sound good, right? No. Oh gosh. Yeah, Sorry, Phil. Ouais. That ça, ça va pas marcher. <laughs> oh, I love it. Absolutely. I, I, I hope you understood that, yeah. Phil. Yeah. Um, all kidding aside, though, if, if someone just you know they have a mm. they have a home or something and they're living with their parents and they have a seven foot ceiling. Um, it, it should, is there something they can try that's well, inexpensive? They can try a cloud, basically, like we talked about okay, earlier. Cloud Just would help suspend a um, some Owens Corning or uh, rock wool there. Try to space it as well from the from the ceiling and see how that works. Okay. Um, um, man, I had a question that just went right, went right out of my brain, Herb. You're doing a lot of ciphering over there, Herb. Uh, there's a lot of great information coming by. I have to take note <laughs> from my studio. <laughs> Because <laughs> I was mixing a three and a half foot, I had a three and a half foot ceiling. It's a Montreal thing. Okay, yeah. guys, I want, you, I want you to see something. I mean, this this cat, I'm telling you, he he he's given us great information, and um, but yet he, 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 like I said, if you got a few million lying around, he, show him one of the things. I want I, I want you guys to see this, not not to be envious necessarily, but to understand that you have options. This is. This is this is a system. This would be a floor. The floor underneath your studio, and the floor is dampened with these springs, so that it it, it this acts as a membrane membrane to absorb low frequencies, whereas a rigid floor would would reflect them. Is is that somewhat the concept behind it? Um, that's to float rooms. So this is how we decouple floor floors basically on professional mm -hmm. studios. So these is it more for 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 for, for base. It's for soundproofing. It's to prevent vibrations from going to one room to the other. Oh, so like if you were working in an office building, a 20-story building, and yeah. you built a studio, then this would keep it from exactly. messing with the people yeah. below. Do you do you do this? Use this? I know it's a stupid it's question. Because it's going to float. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I know it's a stupid question, but you don't do the walls too, do you? The, uh, the walls are standing on the floating floor, so uh, it's so like they a don't have to. concrete bunker basically floating mm -hmm. on these, wow. and so it's. Uh, Quite fascinating the amount of pressure you get on that. Uh, how many pounds before these compress? Thousands? Uh, uh, it's 2.1 tons for that model. It wow. goes up to seven. 
Wow. So that's, um, and you have yeah. these constructed as is your design, of course. Yeah. What's so these the, are. Oh, this is rubber. Uh, this is another type of uh, neoprene which helps dampen high frequencies, because the springs don't. The springs only uh, treat the low frequency mm -hmm. vibrations. So. Yeah, my room at Larrabee has this. It's, yeah. My room at Larrabee is a George Newburn 440 design, and it's mm. it's all floating. Yeah. No, these are for the big boys, but there's uh, 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 other options for smaller studios that we use too. But you know, uh, the same physics that makes uh, a 20 foot by 30 foot bedroom sound good is yeah. the same physics that makes yeah. Larrabee sound good. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's uh, sound is sound. Yeah, absolutely. And you can you can get really good home studios. We actually do a lot of. Uh, private studios and uh, these guys get yeah. uh, you know good results in there they're happy yeah is, is um, um, I was going to ask you if it was expensive but that's a stupid question um, if you're earning money with your studio then 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 it's not expensive because you got to have that to to, to, to earn a living, so it's part of the cost of doing business, a lot yeah. of the set of speakers. But a lot of the guys we work with actually uh, have uh, big home studios or work in a private studio or higher rooms, mm -hmm. and at one point their business expands enough that they can actually support the cost of building their own place. Oh, okay. And then they're, they're they're set for life with the with the with a good studio. And, and just so just so people know, you're just as comfortable working in America as you are in France or Brussels yeah. or Holland. Yeah. Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. I'm going to stick this guy in the batter's box. Will you stay with us while yep. I throw some pictures at him? Sure. Are you ready, my man? Yeah. Can, can I set it up or are you going to nope. set it up? Nope. You can't. we got to get going. Now, Tom. when you were in batter's box, you did all kinds of rule breaking. Without time. That's why. But anyways, Thomas, actually, thank you for coming. We, we really appreciate it. We'll sit here. All right. So we got a couple questions for you really quickly. So at the end of the day, one of the questions that's been going on is, People want to know the best plugins that actually emulate real world gear, right? Yeah, I get that question all the time. So, so you this, want to answer some of them? This batter's box is going to take care of that. All right, so we here we go. We've got to make sure Will's ready. Will's ready. Will, you ready? He's been ready. He's been telling me batter's box for the last five minutes. Oh, okay. All right, so again, best plugins that emulate real world gear. You're going to answer this? Yeah. Let's start with number one the Pultec EQ P1A. The waves, the waves pull tech. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. There yeah. it is up on the screen. Um, how about Tube Tech CL1B? Great compressor. I use it on vocals all the time. Soft tube. That's okay. The one that's, that, that I like. These are the all stars of the bunch, guys. Okay. These are the, these are the plugins that make you proud to use plugins because they emulate really 10, well. Ten seventy three. Ooh, that's a close one. Um, I like the waves. I like the UAD. Yeah. The UAD is. Every, both companies, everything they make is excellent. Mm. SSL channel. Uh, I have to give that nod to Waves. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Yakov and the boys over there. Mm -hmm. um, SSL channel. Uh, that's Waves again. That's number four. Okay. Um, Trident A range. Uh, the Trident A range. Um, there's a couple that I like that are pretty good, but I like the UAD one the best. Okay. By the way, that's a good good plug-in to use. Okay. How about reverb emulation? Whew, that was a tough one. When 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 I was talking to my friends, I, I put this list together, guys, by talking to a bunch of people that have been on the show, and we we tried to get a consensus of of, of what plugins do this best, and. Um, a lot of people said the 224 uh, Lexicon from UAD. A lot of people said the TL Space. A lot of people said the 2016 Revolver. But uh, the, the the everybody seems to think the 224 Lexicon from UAD emulated it really well. Delay Analog 2290. Ooh, um, I like the. Um, um, the UAD EP34, a lot of people mention that. And oddly enough, a lot of people mention the Massey delay. Mm, cool. Ooh, this this next one's important. Flanger. You know what? I couldn't get a consensus from everybody oh. on the flanger. Even though even though I know you're partial to one flanger. Oh man, there's only one flanger. What what is it? The twizzle flanger. Absolutely. There you go. Good but, job. But but <laughs> When I think flanger, I think of that, that rack, little rack mount MXR blue flanger, and we ain't there yet on flangers. Harmonizer. Well, the, the one by Eventide that emulates the 910 is my favorite. Yeah. And then uh, 
Pitch Blend by Sound Toys Boys is really good, mm. and, and a, a close third is Duggar by Waves, and uh, uh, Super Tap by Waves is very close. API 550, 560. Uh, that nod goes to Waves. I love their 550. I use it on a lot of things. Two more pitches. You, you, you tired yet? You, you no, no okay, I can cool. go all day at this. Uh, 902 de -esser. You know what? Uh, I'm going to give you a long answer. A lot of people I talked to, I can't remember if it was um, if it was Joe Barisi or Eric Valentine, uh, but a lot of people say that um, plugins do DSing better than anything. And so uh, I'd give the nod. Or a lot of people mentioned the, the Renaissance, the RDSer, and um, which is my favorite. And then I also like the Massey too. Oh, cool. And last one for you, the SSL Bus Compressor G Series. Ooh, that's a tough one. Oh, and another DSR I like is the uh, the the 555 uh, Mac DSP. That one's a monster. Mm -hmm. uh, SSL Bus Compressor. Uh, I like the way I like the Waves one best of all. Oh, cool. The UAD is good, but it doesn't act as much like a like the actual G compressor as the Waves one does. The way they're both great. Great. It's just if you want if you just want the G compressor, the SSL does that best. Great, great, good job. Uh -huh. Well done. Hey, Dr. Drew. I want you to team me up two quick questions for corner office, and then we want to remind yeah. people of stuff that's going on because we're watching the ticket counter. And yeah, but I know you'll put it on eBay that. and make some money. So, okay, real quick, um, from Ravian the Dutchman, uh, I don't know if you guys covered this, but uh, what do you think about the product from uh, IK Multimedia, the ARC? Are you familiar with that at all? Oh, great question. Yeah, can you guys uh, talk about that a bit? I'm, I'm not a big fan of these things. Uh, they're trying to fix things that are physically impossible to fix the way they do. Uh, but they, they do improve things in mm -hmm. some rooms. Uh, but the better the room gets, the more you hear the problems involved in the, in the or, or any similar products. Um, so it's, I think it, it can help in some cases and in other cases. If you your room is really bad, it's not going to help. It, but your uh, room it, has to be a s almost. If your room is really bad, actually, it helps a bit. Oh, it does? Yeah, uh, but as soon as your room gets to a certain level, it will be more detrimental than anything else. Okay. So. Good to know. Uh, also, from Andrew William Spence, um, if the room dimensions aren't right, are you fighting a losing battle? Um, yes and no. There's, you, you can still get away with a lot of stuff. Uh, you just need to be, again, careful and think about it as a, as a global system and think about all the different... Uh, areas you need to look at and make sure that your your whole thing makes sense. Let me ask you a, a stupid question, kind of an extension of what he said. Let's pretend like like the average room that you work on costs a thousand dollars to do. Mm. If, if the room has good dimensions, do you go, oh wow, I can do this for fifty dollars less? Or if it has bad dimensions, I, it's going to cost me fifty dollars more. Is it, is it? Do you ever think like that? Or yeah, is, we do. Actually. Oh, you do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. uh, but we always try to make the rooms as good as best well, as they can I, be with the budget I, there is. You, you, you have trouble bragging on yourself, but I've known you to, to just work diligently. You don't give up. You work and work and work until it's right. It's, it's got to be perfect and it's got to be right. You, you, you never let anything go past, uh, past you that's not perfect yeah, and but not the, right. When you're uh, you know, working with engineers that sometimes put their life savings in the project, you can't, you just, you can't mess up. You, you really have to deliver immediately I something agree. great. It's like and, your mixes. Yeah. Will you come back? Yes, please. It was absolutely nice a pleasure. You. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you Dave. Absolute Say his name pleasure. again, Herb. No, you said because <laughs> I, you know, Jean Jean. Very good, yeah. very good. Good. Yep. How come you can't get Jean right? Man, I got this. I got a mental block with Jean. Jean. It's all right. Don't worry Jean. about it. Don't Jean. worry about it. Jean. Listen, before we go, guys, we want hold on, to. Hold on. Uh, it's, that's a French word. Say it for me. Jean. Oh, that doesn't help. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we should get out. <laughs> so guys, uh, listen, remember, Pensado Live, the Mix Fest is coming. Oh, please. Get to the website, pensadosplace.tv. We're going to have a lot of stuff on that website coming up. We're going to allow people to blog. We're going to have reference songs from some of the best engineers in the country that you can learn, reference your mixes. Lots of stuff all coming. You can see it up on the screen. Uh, we've been watching the ticket counter. Tickets are going already get there again la and all its environments online community we're coming to you thank you so much we want to give a special shout out to our host over at the ivar theater 
Candace Kohler and Cecilia Berry and Los Angeles Recording School provide this beautiful theater and this opportunity to do this. Um, we really love it. Um, Dave, let's say goodbye and uh, get ready for And we're going to tell you more and more each week about what's coming up. Four weeks to get it done. Man, I'm excited about the website. I'm excited about the Mix Fest. This is, this is, this is what I live for. This is the whole reason we started this Absolutely. thing, right, Herb? Educate, have fun, give value, and, uh, and pull and, this community together. And, and take the, the live place. show, the live, the, the live show allows us to, 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 the Pensada's Place and the live show are two different entities, but Pensada's Place uh, we we fight daily to keep this free for you, and, and the live show is going to help us keep this show going. Expand the expand what we can Absolutely. do with the with the with Pensada's place. We'll have a, a a little bit of cash to fly some people around and and get her some uh, get Drew some pointing lessons. It's gonna it's just a, it's just a it's just a great opportunity. I'm really excited about it, and and I hope you guys feel that, Herbert. Hey, time to go. Say goodbye. All right, guys. Uh, Go back and go back and watch the ITL again. I, I I can't emphasize enough that it has implications way beyond drums. And then if, if you're a rock guy, print your drums on two tracks and, and apply some of those techniques and add that back in to to your to your tracks. And, and I think you'll I think you'll have fun with that. And um, we've got new things to report for you next week. Every every day now, something new is going on. So much is going on. And so stay tuned and. Uh, We'll see you next week.